Thunderdome Boxing Talk, Anthony here. Alright, Larry Merchant gave me an idea for a video. Um, he has thoughts on Floyd Mayweather coming back and who he'd like to see him fight if he came back. Um, I, I'd love to see the fight he, he's talking about, too. He'd like to see Terrence Crawford. Um, I'd like to see that fight as well. I also have my top 20 fights uh, that I would just love to see in boxing right now or in the next year, period. Um, it actually kind of goes over 21, uh, over 20 because, you know, there's like a couple guys that are the winners and, and things like that. But you know, it's, you'll get the gist of it. Anyway, I want to read what Larry Merchant says because uh, that's kind of what I'm going to go off of. And I want to talk about what he says as well. Uh, this is from Edward Tchaikovsky from Boxing Scene. Um, Damn it! The title, uh, you know what? I can't. I don't even. I can't even get the title right now because I chopped it off. But uh, former HBO analyst Larry Merchant is expecting Floyd Mayweather Jr. 49 and 0, 26 KOs to come out of retirement for a 50th fight if the right financial opportunity comes along. I, I totally agree. Uh, I think he'll be back no matter what. I mean. It, if he can get a, if he can get like even ten million uh, against a fairly easy opponent, why wouldn't he come back? Just why why wouldn't he? You know, it'd be like a sparring match for ten million. Are you kidding me? Um, n now, uh, if it's a tough fight, you know, a really tough fight, uh, then I, I don't see him coming back. But with so many fighters being from the hundred and forty. You know, it's 154. He, he can always find somebody. Mayweather made 300 mil for his May 2nd victory over Manny Pacquiao. He came back in September to make a fraction of that number with a lopsided win over Andre Berto. He made about 10% of 300 mil. He made, you know, 30, 32, somewhere around there. Um, the fight with Berto was more about satisfying the remaining obligation of his exclusive multi-fight deal with Showtime. Uh, and that's all it was. You know, he wasn't... And that's what makes me... That's the only reason it makes me think maybe he doesn't want to come back. Because he could have picked a better fighter and made more money. So if he wanted to make an extra 10, he could have made an extra 10 in that 49th fight. So, you know, that kind of conflicts. Uh, why didn't he just fight um, an Amir Khan? Um... Why didn't he just fight a, 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 a Brook or a Thurman um, or a GGG? He would have made a shit ton of money. Uh, so if it was really just about making some extra money, mm, he could have done it. But that's the thing. They would have had to have been tough fights. So if he could get maybe not someone as easy as Berto, but someone you know in between a Berto and, let's say, a Maidana, um, if he could get at least ten million for that, he'll come back. And I honestly don't think he'll ever see thirty million again. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but you can quote me on that. I, I really do not think he'll ever see thirty million again, unless it's obviously against a a tough opponent. Um, you know, but if he he'll never get thirty million for a Maidana type or. a... Uh, uh, even not even a Berto, I'm not even going there. But let's say uh, just a Madonna type, a B level guy. I don't see it. Um, I don't see anyone kicking up that kind of money. Um, imagine if Floyd came back. Imagine if Thurman beat Porter or something like that, and then he came back to fight Thurman. That'd be a big fight. Um, but Thurman's gonna want a nice chunk too. Floyd's gonna want a nice chunk, and he's not under a contract for guaranteed money. So, you know, Showtime or HBO, whoever would win that bid, and I think they would stay with Showtime. Um, he said, you know, he's loyal to Showtime. So I think he would stay with Showtime. There's no way that they're going to be like, okay, well, we'll give you, you know, 30 and you 15 and then risk not making that money back. Because let's face it, um, his last fight, uh, the, the disappointment from the Pacquiao fight, and 
the you know the disappointment for the Berto fight, the you know and the Pacquiao disappointment showed with the buys um, in the Berto fight, and it was low numbers because of his opponent too. But you know people were kind of just fed up. They're they're not really willing to kick up seventy five bucks to to watch a guy you know try to try to not fight in a fight for as long as he possibly can. You know, because Berto is even talking about how, you know, he all he does is watch the clock, tries to stay out of engaging for as long as possible, does just enough, you know, win the rounds, and then, you know, go scatter off, and just tries to burn the clock away. Um, I don't know if he'd be able to do that against Thurman or anything, but, you know, casuals, they would probably think, well, Floyd's picking them. It's kind of an easy fight, and they've been sold hype jobs before. And I'm not saying Thurman's hype job, but they might think he is. Uh, casuals, not not hardcores. I'm talking about people who just buy the big fights. They might, they probably barely even know Thurman. Um, you know, the guys who just have fight parties with a couple guys over. Um, after beating Berto, Floyd announced his retirement from the sport. Most expect him to return next year. Merchant is among that group of people who believe the right opportunity will bring Mayweather back. So, Floyd fans, you might not have seen the last of your boy. How's that? Um, you really might not have. The opponent who would stand on the opposite end of the ring is still a mystery, though. One fighter who Merchant is very high on is current WBO junior welterweight champion Terrence Crawford, 26-0 with 18 KOs, who a lot of experts view as a future superstar, myself included. I'm not saying I'm an expert. I'm just saying I view him as a future superstar. Uh, he has the makings of a future superstar. It's, it's really up to Aram and Terrence Crawford. He has to excite the fans, and Aram has to do a good job of promoting them. And, you know, promoters don't really promote that much no more, especially with, well, they do with fights that aren't on TV, but fights that are on Showtime or HBO, you know, me and Jamie October were just talking about this shout-out. Um, we were just talking about how, you know, the networks are the promoters. You know, if you're, if you're an HBO fighter, HBO is your promoter. You know, what is promotion? Advertising. <laughs> Come on. You know, do you see um, Al Heyman running down the street, you know, passing out fucking uh, DVDs of his fighters with pamphlets? Or do you see Aram doing that? Do you see King, King was a promoter? He was probably the last um, of the great promoters. You know, he would actually go everywhere and talk and, you know, um, <laughs> wave his little flags and you know, brag about his fighters and all that. He was probably the last of the real promoters. Where was I? Uh, yeah, Terrence Crawford. Uh, superstar. All right. Merchant admits that Crawford lacks the star power um, now and the financial benefits that a Pacquiao rematch or even a fighter like Amir Khan can bring. I think that this is a merchant quote. I think the general feeling is that he will try to come out and win his 50th if somebody emerges who can generate a third as much as the last fight. So he's saying 10 million. You know, if he can get 10 mil, um, he'll come out. You know. Uh, which is crazy. Or is he talking about but he says his last fight, he don't say the Pacquiao fight. The last fight, you know, what's that? A little over ten million? Um you know, a third of the three hundred mil would be a hundred million. He would have to fight a, a triple G to to generate that kind of money. Maybe a Pacquiao rematch would do that. Um but with people with how people got burned that first time, I'm not buying the rematch. I already paid for a Pacquiao. Floyd fight once, and I didn't get a Pacquiao Floyd fight, so they still owe me one as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'm sorry, I ain't buying a rematch. 
Anyway, I think the general feeling is that he'll try to come out when his 50th if somebody emerges who can generate a third as much as the last fight. Says Merchant to New Hub. Uh, another quote. Maybe it's Pacquiao. If he can go out and beat somebody really good, or maybe it's somebody who goes out and beats Pacquiao really good. Personally, I'd love to see Crawford fight him, but Crawford is not as well known as, say, Khan or Pacquiao. But if somebody emerges, I guess the conventional wisdom is yes, Mayweather will give it a go for a nine-figure payday. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, he's talking about a uh, hundred million, a hundred million. Uh, Floyd and Terrence, I don't think that would generate that at all. Um, Terrence would have to put some major work in. He'd have to fight Postal. That's for sure, like, ASAP. Um, mm, that'd be hard. Um, but I would love that fight, man. I really would. That would be... That's one of the, the, you know, the fighters who I would love to see Floyd come back and fight. Floyd has a bit of a size advantage, but he's also not in his prime. All right? And Crawford is in his prime. And, you know, Floyd did this a lot, where he would be in his prime uh, and fighting guys out of their prime. So it would be interesting to see, and he would look great, right? But let's see if he could look great, uh, you know, past his prime against a guy in his prime. And, um, you know, if he's going to do it with that WBC belt, remember, WBC... Uh, the WBC is with Vada now, and every time their you know their titles are on the line, uh, you have to do Vada testing. Vada, okay. I don't know if maybe they'd make an exception for Mayweather. We know that the WBC will kind of do whatever Floyd tells them, and if he just says, "Hey, I'm not using um, Vada. I'm using Usada," the WBC might say. Okay, you know, who knows? Um, but I would like to see Floyd come back and use Vada. All right. And, you know, um, fight fight one of these young guns. Um, hey, just, just, just do it. I mean, if he's, you know, was the best uh, in the world, just, you know, a, a, say if he comes back in 2016, just a year earlier, he was best in the world. So even though he was out of his prime, um, the theory is that he was still better than everyone else. You know, plus, we would get to see him against the type of fighter that we never saw him in with. Starting with an elite level fighter in their prime. Um, at their best fighting weight, you know, uh, I would say if they fought at welterweight, it would be at um, Crawford's best fighting weight. Because we know he he comes in, uh, you know, 150s. So Floyd does come in higher uh, than, you know, what people think. That's why he hasn't been weighed for his last three fights on fight night. He's coming in at a buck sixty, um, for sure, for sure. But... That's not that big of a weight difference. You know, it's not. Um, I'd, I wouldn't care if he had five, six pounds on Crawford at all. I'd call that totally fair, legit, whatever. Um, if Crawford can't overcome five, six pounds, then he isn't what we thought he was anyway. But it would be, there's a chance it could be a very boring fight. Um, but it would be interesting to see how, you know, what if Crawford would fight on the back foot and play May the Mayweather role and make Mayweather come after him and try to counter Floyd. Because I would say Crawford is faster than Floyd is now. You know, not prime for prime, but the prime Crawford is faster than the Floyd we just saw versus Manny or Berto. Um, you know, uh, he has better legs, even though Floyd's legs are looking great still. Uh, and I think we know what to attribute that to, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, somehow they were, like, getting shot visibly, and we could see it, and then they just, you know, boom, you know, got brought right back to life somehow. Uh, it is what it is. You know, 
Floyd would have a little bit of a size advantage. I'm not sure about the height. Um, <clears throat> their height, I think their height's about the same, uh, give or take an inch. Uh, and I think, I think um, Crawford's reach is 70 inches, I think. And we know Floyd's is, you know, 73, 72 and a half, 73. Uh, I, I think Crawford would be fast enough to counter him, but it would be interesting to see if Floyd's ring IQ uh, could, you know, work out a plan uh, against a guy like Crawford. Because not only is he would, would he be the first elite uh, level fighter he ever fought in their prime, he wouldn't be in his prime. Uh... The guy can fight southpaw and orthodox. I mean, that would cause Floyd tremendous problems. Um, people think he does great against southpaws. He doesn't. All right, um, he doesn't. You know, that's he has a weakness there. He has a weakness for a great jab too. Um, Crawford has all of that. And okay, you know, if you do believe Floyd does great against a southpaw. Is he going to be able to handle a guy who keeps switching up on him and can fight in either stance just as well as he can? Uh, you know, he can fight southpaw just as well as he can orthodox. That's crazy. Um, their footwork, both tr you know, tremendous. Um, Crawford got more pop, but I don't know if his pop would carry up uh, to 47 and be able to hurt you know, like 160 pound Floyd. And I'm thinking you saw the Floyd, all right? I think if he used Vada, I think he would get dogged out. I, li I really do. Um, I think he would get dogged out. But if it's you saw the Floyd, I don't know if Crawford has the power to hurt him. Floyd has taken some big shots. We've seen him hurt numerous times. I mean, one, two, three, four. Five. I mean, he's been hurt a lot, but he always recovers and comes back and wins, right? It'd be interesting to see what what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of hands Crawford could lay on him. Could he really come over top of that jab and just sting him with that big right hand? I don't know. You know, might hurt him, might just buzz him, but then that could give Crawford a chance to... You know, come on strong, open up. Uh, we know Crawford does box. He can play the Mayweather type. Or he can come in and be very athletic and versatile and bang it out on the inside. Um, he's an extremely versatile fighter. Floyd likes, you know, when he would hand, you know, hand pick his opponents. He never would pick a guy like Crawford. Ever. He never fought... Oh, and then the, the whole black, uh, prime black fighter. Good prime black fighter. We've never seen that. Um, never. We've never seen him in there with, you know, a top level uh, black guy. Right? And that would be interesting because this is a, a, a slickster, but someone who can kind of mix it up. You know, Crawford, minus the, the, the southpaw and orthodox um, like that, he reminds me of a Charlie Burley. He really does. Um, he can fight defensively, but he also got power and can be aggressive. All right, um, he's versatile. Uh, that you know, that would be interesting to see Floyd fight a guy like that. So I can see where Merchant's coming from. That would be a tremendous fight. I just don't see it happening with Crawford with Aram um, and the fight not generating generating so much money that the two sides can come together and say, look, this fight can generate so much money, we have to do it. Um, I don't see Moonvest coming down from his ivory tower and being like, you know, you're fighting Crawford. No, because the, the, the money ain't there. Now, maybe in two years or something, if Crawford does something amazing in, uh, you know, 2016, maybe 2017, I don't know. I don't know if Floyd would fight that long. Um, and I don't even know if he'll ever fight again holding that WBC title. See, he might have to just drop that title completely so he doesn't have to use Vada. Because um, we know the WBC has made a pact with, with Vada that every fight 
that someone is fighting for <clears throat> a WBC world title, there's going to be VADA testing involved. And actually, I don't even know if it has to be a world title. I think it's just any WBC title. Because uh, Triple G and Lemieux are doing VADA testing. And that's just for that, you know, whatever WBC title uh, um, Gennady has, you know, which is like the number one contender one or whatever. Um, it's going to be interesting, though, to see also with that WBC thing. I've said this before. What's Adonis Stevenson um, and Wowder? They're going to have to do VADA testing. I, I, no, Heyman fighters don't do VADA. They never have. But he does have guys with the WBC title. So I'm curious what's going to happen there. Um, that'll really show what kind of power Heyman has. You know, If he can really get his guys to continue taking USADA while fighting for that WBC title and everyone else is taking VADA while fighting for that WBC title... Um, when they're not fighting his guys, obviously, that's going to be bullshit. But it'll let us know what kind of power um, he has uh, over or with the WBC. You know, that, man, I would really love that matchup. I, I, I really would. I just don't think we'll ever see it. You know, no way in hell. I don't think in any fucking, you know, uh, not even in an alternate universe is Floyd going after a guy like Terrence Crawford. That's just the one type of guy he's always stayed away from and always would and will. I, I you know, come on now. Um, uh, Triple G fight, ne that's never going to happen. Um, the Cotto fight, if Cotto beats Canelo and Cotto vacates the WBC, that Cotto Mayweather fight is likely to happen. Uh, I don't know if that could get him a hundred million, though. You know, so someone would really... It would have to be Pacquiao. You know, it would have to be Pacquiao for him to think he's getting a hundred mil. And I don't even know if a network would guarantee him a hundred million for that fight. Unless, you know, he took a hundred and Pacquiao took, like, you know, 30 million or something, 35 million. Um, I don't know. You know, that's a lot of money to, to put up knowing how pissed people were before. I mean, what, they would have to get over 2 million buys. They would have to do over 50% of their last fight. Do you really think over half of the people that bought that last fight are going to buy the next one. And then you, we, you're going to be like, well, there might be new people to buy it. Well, you know, just the word of mouth that spread. I mean, for two weeks, everywhere I went, people were like, do you watch that fight? I'm like, yeah. And they'd be like, either they saw it or they didn't. And every time uh, they watched it, they would say, Man, all, all Floyd did was they weren't they were just casuals, you know. They were they were just like, man, all Floyd did is run, and man, he tried to fight. Or they'd be like, I didn't see it, but all I heard was uh, it was a waste of money because Floyd didn't want to fight, and man, he just was chasing him all night. Now, you know, that's I, we we can argue, you know, that they don't know what they're talking about, or they do know what they're talking about all night. I'm not getting into that. But that left a bad taste with not just the buyers of that fight, but everybody they talked to. I mean, I was in the doctor's office one day with like 15 people, and everyone was talking about it and saying how disappointed, or they heard how disappointing it was. So I don't even think they could hit 50%. Uh, 100 million, I think he's out of his mind if he thinks he's getting that. He should be happy if he can get 20, 30. You know, tops. If he's fighting a top, top, tough fighter, I can understand, you know, 30 million. Um, and even that's asking a lot. It depends how much the other guy wants. You know, if it's like a, a Brook or Thurman uh, or, you know, Porter. If Porter beats Thurman, whoever wins out of them, them fights, you know, maybe that fight could... I don't know, man. If he's wanting 100 million, he, he just ain't coming back. Nah, that's why, you know, I think he would have to settle for less. 
Uh, but he did tell his dad that he wanted a, a few easy fights for less money, meaning that he, you know, I've, I've, I saw his father um, say it, that he didn't necessarily want these huge money fights. He wanted a few fights where he could make like 10, 15, 20 million. Um, he'd take 10 million for a really easy one. Do three of them, you know, bam. Uh, pad his record, make 30 million more. You know, uh, but the fights, my fights, right? All right, and this is in no particular order, but it kind of started from the lower weights and went up. Uh, the Gonzalez, I almost said Gonzada, Gonzalez Estrada rematch. All right, that's a unification fight as well. They fought at light flyweight. Um, that's not Estrada's best weight. Um, Gonzalez kind of, uh, it was a real good fight, um, you know, the first half, and then Gonzalez punches and output started to break Estrada down. I would like to see what would happen. Uh, and it was still a good ass fight. Like I was, dude. That was one. Of, that was one of my favorite fights. That's why I want to see that rematch so bad. And I want to see it so bad because I know um, Gonzalez's game will be stepped up, and Estrada's game will be stepped up even more than Gonzalez's. So that kind of evens it out a bit. Um, and that rematch. You know, like some people have Klitschko number one, some people have Gonzalez number one. I'm talking about the pound for pound list. Um, I think if Gonzalez fought Estrada at flyweight, unified and like beat him either the same way, maybe a knockout or at least a you know a wide unanimous decision, I think that would pretty much you know k k kill the argument. I mean, I understand Lad's domination. Um, the thing people and myself have, he, in a lot of those fights, he used, you know, the same thing we bitched to Floyd for with Maidana, you know, so it goes across the board, man. Could Lad have beaten those fights if they weren't in Germany and he wasn't, uh, and he wasn't allowed to use uh, a lot of those dirty tactics? Like holding and then pushing the guy off, popping him and shit like that. I don't know. You know, I somehow I don't think he would be uh, undefeated for or for this length of time. You know, he has a 22 fight win streak um, since his Brewster loss, and I somehow think that would have been broken along the way by somebody had he not been allowed. To you know, like example, the Pavetkin fight. I mean, what if he wasn't allowed to do that to Pavetkin and had to actually fight the guy? You know, we don't know what would have happened. Um, you know, j just so many guys. I don't know if he could. That's the thing. I just don't know if he wouldn't have done that. I would put him at number one because pound for pound, you know, it's basically all around skill set is my number one criteria. But then it also comes to, you know, resume and uh, who you fought, how you beat them, who you lost to, you know, all that stuff. But, uh, and I don't rate lads all around skills that highly, but his domination is off the chain. But could he have done that uh, if he had to, you know, get rid of those illegal tactics? I don't know if he could have. I just, I, I've, I don't think he could have, put it that way. Um, but if you keep letting him fight in Germany, and then yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Um, even though uh, after, uh, the, when the referee, uh, when he was fighting Jennings, and the referee told him to stop, he started to open up more and was doing good. You know, it was almost like, dude, why do you ever hold? You're doing damn good without it. You know, but he just, he was trained that way just to play it safe. Uh, you know, uh, I like the guys that are coming in to, to, to kill. They're not trying to clinch and push off and, you know, lean on you and all that. I, that takes points away, in my opinion, man. That takes points away. Um, and Gonzalez... He don't do none of that shit. He just gets in there, fights, and whoops everyone's ass he's been in there with so far. 
and he's been in there with some great fighters. Three divisions along the way. Now he's the flyweight lineal. I think Estrada is holding what the WBA and I think he he got another one too. I think it's the WBO, but it might be the IBF. I'm not sure. But that would be a great fight, and it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I mean, that's a that's a a, a rematch that fans are drooling for, man, drooling for. Uh, then another one I got is Anui versus Yamanaka. I I'd like to see Anui go up and fight Yamanaka. I'd like to see Gonzalez go up and fight Anui too, um, but uh, I'll get to that. But I'd like to see uh, Anui go up and fight Yamanaka. Right? They're both basically pound for pound type fighters. Um, Anui isn't on Ring Magazine's pound for pound, but Yamanaka is. I think he's at the very bottom. Uh, I think he's twenty four and zero. A lot of knockouts, but not like a 90% KO ratio. And Anui is just a beast, man. Um, what's that guy's name? Lee Wiley or whatever? Shout out to Lee Wiley, dude. I fucking love, uh, love your videos, man. I really do. I've, I've watched every one of them multiple times. Um, he does the, the analysis and shows you in slow motion. Um, guys' skills and their skill sets and the traps they're setting or the, 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 the footwork that puts them in position to land punch. I mean, like that the Benny Leonard, the commander, um, the ring commander, whatever, uh, Rigandau, the, the way of the jackal, oh, that's a phenomenal one. Uh, he got one on Floyd. He got a whole bunch on Floyd Manny. Um, he got one on Triple G, he got one on, there's one out there on Ezra Charles called The Sweet Scientist, which, which is phenomenal, I don't think he did that though, there's another one out there like that on Charlie Burley, which is phenomenal, and my, I'm telling you man, I'm, my, I'm done with everything I want to put in the video, I'll be making that video on the next slow day, I guess, when I'll really have much to talk about or feel like talking uh, about certain things, I'm going to put that video up. But it's ready, so it's, it'll be out soon. Um, shit, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, he got a whole bunch, man. He got... Uh, the, he did the one with Bruce Lee's Five Ways to Attack, and he shows the, the certain boxers doing uh, what Bruce Lee was talking about. That's a great video. I think that's his biggest video that got the most views. That shit went viral during May Pack. Um, uh, what other one he got? He got, uh, he got one more. He got, they're all good, but he got one more that I really liked and I wanted to say. Shit, 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 shit. Oh, uh, uh, Andre Ward, like water. All right, that's that. That's it's one of my favorites. It shows you how Andre Ward um, has so many styles. It's crazy. It's it's a, a great video to watch if you're an Andre Ward fan. Um, you'll love it. You'll love it. Like you know, he, he's like that's why I say he's a he's a beast, man. He just needs to fucking fight. Um, but that's a really good one. So big shout out to I think his name is Lee Wiley. Um, but if you just type in Andre Ward like Water or you know Rigandau, the Way of the Jackal, uh, Benny Leonard, uh, the Ring Commander, you'll see them all. You know, he he only has maybe you know twenty thirty or something like that of them. He doesn't have hundreds, but he has more than enough to satisfy you. And he he keeps making new ones. The other one. Uh, uh, well, first of all, I said Anui and Yamanaka. I'd really just like to see that. I'd like to see Yamanaka style versus Anui. I think Anui is uh, big enough to go up. Um, be a tremendous fight. I know that's, you know, obviously wouldn't be a unification. but And then another one, which would be a unification, is Rigandau and Frampton. Right, we have to see that fight, man. These guys got to fight Rigo. And I think the other best guy in the division outside of Rigandau, in my opinion, is Carl Frampton. So that's the fight I want in that division. Um, and Featherweight, uh, Loma and Walters. 
Lomachenko versus Walters. If Wal if Walters can still make 126, uh, that's the fight we need. I would like to see Walters make 126 and get his belt back um, first, you know, just to prove that he can still make 126, and then the very next fight, fight Loma. Uh, but and, and Gonzalez versus Anui. All right, I'd like to see, you know, this would have to take a while because um, I want to see Gonzalez really, really, like, clear out flyweight, um, then move up and fight Anui after Anui has, you know, more experience as well. Not that he really needs any. That dude is a prodigy, a prodigy. Um, then the obvious one, since I was talking about both of these guys, is Lomachenko versus Rigondeau. Um, I, for one didn't care that Rigo wanted Loma at 24. But I didn't want the weight. He Rigo wanted Loma at 124 with a 10 pound rehydration clause so he couldn't he had the weigh in at 124 and couldn't put on more than 10 pounds. Now Rigandau came out and said that that wasn't um, him saying that cuz Gary Hyde at the time was running his Twitter and was trying to get Rigo in a big fight before Rigo fired him um so you know that could have been just Gary Hyde uh could have been Hyde and Rigo who knows you know or it could have been Rigo's idea I don't know um but I didn't mind the the meeting in the middle but not with a rehydration clause like that. That's bullshit. You're already making this guy suffer and cut, you know, extra weight. So at least let him put all that weight back on as best he can. Um, now, if you want to do do it at 126, uh, I don't care. I, a 10 pound rehydration clause would have been fine by me because I think Rigo or I think Loma usually comes in around 135 anyway so that really wouldn't have affected him there but I didn't mind the meeting in the middle just like I didn't mind Andre Ward and Golovkin meeting in the middle I mean these are you know uh, extremely talented fighters um, one you know for you know Triple G is clearly not a super middleweight and Rigo is clearly not a featherweight so I didn't have a problem with it. Uh, you know, some people had a problem with the Triple G one, but they they liked the idea of, you know, draining Loma. I didn't get that at all. It's the same fucking thing. How do you like one and hate the other? Uh, I didn't have a problem with either. But, you know, if they're, you know, they're going to do it, uh, just do it at 126. No, fuck it. If Loma won't do 124, which he said he won't, so, you know, I, I would like to see Rigo go up. If Rigo loses, I don't give a shit. I know he, he just challenged the best guy all around him, all right? So if he lost, I would hold nothing against him. He would still be a pound-for-pound pound fighter, one of my top fighters. Um, same goes for... For Loma, well, I, I would actually look at Loma a little different because I'd be like, damn, you even had size. And you, well, it depends how he lost. But if he got, you know, knocked out or spanked or something real bad, that would change my opinion on him. But I think that would be a fight of the ages because you can say, you know, Rigo can be in boring fights, but he can also be in exciting fights. And Loma is never in a boring fight. So even if you put him in with Rigo, it ain't going to be boring because he's going to be doing all his high-tech shit and fucking unloading, man. So, no, that fight will not be boring. I mean, my eyes, I'd have to watch that fight 20 times to study everything that they did in that fight. Um, Uchiyama versus Walters. All right, if Walters can't make featherweight anymore, um, I would like to see him try to make featherweight one more time. But he is too big for featherweight. He can fight it lightweight easily. And lightweight's wide open right now. I'm surprised he hasn't just jumped up there because um, it's wide open. And there's no – he can go up there and fight a top fighter, and it, it's, it's not a great fighter. So he can easily go up there, fight a top lightweight, and beat their ass – 
and then kind of take over the division for a while until you know the 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 other guys that are the prospects that are coming up come up. Um, but I like to see him even just go to 130 and and fight Uchiyama. I think that would be a tremendous fight. Um, you know, because he is a 130 pounder as of his last fight. So you now we'll have to see if he can make 126 again. Crawford Postal, obviously. That makes, uh, I just saw Michael Montero, shout out Mont Montero, um, I do, he was just talking about um, the winner of that would be, you know, the lineal champ, because after, if, well, if Crawford gets past Dieri Jean, that they should be number one and number two in Ring Magazine. Uh, and basically by everyone's rankings. I don't care who you have as one or who you have as two. They are one and two. So that would give us the lineal champ. And uh, they would have to, you know, clear out some more guys too. I mean, you know, each of them would have fought, uh, you know, a couple of decent fighters. So, you know, that that's all taken into consideration. And I think we're... I was going to say fairly likely, but I think we're very likely to, to get that fight. Uh, Brooke versus the winner of Thurman Porter. All right. Um, actually, more Brooke versus Thurman. All right. But I was saying if Porter won, then make it Porter. But I'd still like to see Brooke versus Thurman. I think Brooke versus Thurman is a tremendous fight. I would love to see it. Um, Thurman said he has no problem, his exact words were, I'd fight Brook in the UK, I'd fly right over there, he said. So, yeah, I think they should do it in the UK, because that, you know, the, the environment would be electric, uh, you know, Brook did already come over here and fought an American champion. I'd like to see, you know, Thurman go over there, because Thurman's always bragging that he'll fight, he wants to fight in China. And, you know, Dubai, he wants to fight in Mexico, he wants to fight fucking in the UK, he wants to fight everywhere, he said. You know, he's from that school, that's what, I love Thurman for that reason, man. He's like, you know, this, in, in boxing, you're a world champion, alright, so you should be fighting all over the world. I loved when he said that, I was like, man, you know, Thurman can go overboard sometimes, but when he's on point, he is on point uh, in terms of like talking about what a true champion is and, or just what a true fighter is. Um, I love his mindset. I love Thurman. Uh, Brooke versus Bradley also. That fight gotta happen. Um, it's hard to go against Bradley but I would favor Brooke. Um, Brooke's a big welterweight. Um, he'd have, you know, Big size advantage frame wise on uh, Bradley, but I'd like to see that fight take place in America. I would just because Thurman's the type that that you know Brooke wouldn't be holding that much. But if Bradley is attacking, Brooke might have a tendency to hold. So if it's held in the UK, he might be able to hold a lot and get away with it. So I'd like to see that fight in America. Just so, no matter which way they fight, there's going to be no holding. Um, and uh, in all honesty, uh, I'm looking at Brooke like um, the guy who should take over the welterweight division. You know, he should be. You know, he might lose, but he's got a lot of tough fighters to fight out there. Uh, as long as he. I'm going to ride with Brooke uh, through till the beginning of 2016. But if in 2016 he straight picks a cherry, I'm going to be so pissed. So pissed. Um, if he fights Bradley, I'll be cool. If he fights like a Thurman or someone, I'll be cool. But he can't fight another cherry. He just can't. Um, you know, yeah, JoJo Dan... Uh, then uh, Gavin, now I understand one of them was a mandatory. Um, Chavez is an easy fighter to bring over. It's an entertaining fight. Uh, you know, he's an upper, you know, uh, 
a fringe contender, put it that way, you know. Uh, but he shouldn't really be fighting those guys. But if he just wanted to get one more fight in for the year, okay, and do it over there. But I don't want four fights in a row um, in the UK unless it's against a certain type of fighter, like a Thurman, I wouldn't mind over there. Um, but certain guys I wouldn't want to see over there. I'd like to see him and Khan too, but that's not on my list. Um, Manny Pacquiao versus Khan. I'd love to see that fight. Um, give Khan his fucking big fight and let's see if he can win it. Right? He keeps saying he can beat a any of these guys. Well, if you can't beat a an aging Manny, then come on. So give him his big fight. Let's see what he can do. Let's see what he can do. And let's see what um Virgil Hunter has done with Khan. Because I think it's clear as day that Khan was a better fighter with Freddie Roach. Uh, did he get knocked to, you know, knocked uh, stupid by Danny Garcia uh, with Roach? Yes. Um, however, I still think he was a better fighter. You know, he was boxing Danny's ears off for a while there. And he just wasn't really being aware of... Uh, of those big power looping shots coming around. He was taking too many chances. He got too excited in the fight. He needed to slow it down, pace it, um, you know. But I still, um, I want to see Khan versus a top guy. Let's see what he got. You know, let's see what Virgil Hunter was able to do with him. Um, he's had enough of those easy stays, you know, stay them safety fights to stay uh unbeaten for a while for a big fight so give the guy the damn big fight the uh, this ain't on my list but the the Garcia Khan rematch is also a fight I want to see bad uh, real bad um, the other one 154 is a division that's kind of a mess right now you know with Floyd's belts not being in play um, you know, none of the top guys fighting each other um, f since Canelo Lara. I mean, it's uh, it's out of control in that division. These guys need to fight. So I'd like to see Lara fight Jamal Charlo. Uh, unify these belts up. You know, get something going on there. Uh, you know, looking over the division. And I don't consider Canelo... Uh, 54 pounder no more since he hasn't fought at 54 um, since since basically the before the Floyd fight he last time he weighed in at 54 was before the Floyd fight for Floyd it was 152 every fight after has been at a middleweight catch weight of 155 so he is not in my uh, you know 54 division right now he's just not um, that might be where he's rated at and ranked, whatever. But to me, no, no, he's he gotta go up to middleweight. I don't like that catchweight shit. You're a fucking middleweight if you ain't fighting at 54. So I'd like to see Lara versus Jamal Charlo, and I think that would be a tremendous fight. You know, you have a boxer puncher, um, versatile, uh, much more versatile than Lara Charlo is. Uh, and I'd like to see Charlo, how he deals with that, uh, you know, Cuban style of Lara's. You know, it's not necessarily just the Cuban style, because Lara kind of changed up. It's his version of the Cuban style, where he really doesn't have, like, the ring IQ of a, um, a Rigandau, let's say. But he uses that one-two, you know, one-two move. One, move, jab, move, jab, move, one, two, move. I'd like to see how Charlo could cut the ring off, use his versatility. I mean, that would remind me of, like, a middleweight fight from the 80s or, or the 90s, I should say, not the 80s, the 90s, like 97. Um, that'd be a great, that'd be a tremendous fight. I'd really love to see that. And I hope that fucking fight happens, man, because 54 is in a mess, in a mess. Um, you know, the winner uh, of the Triple G Lemieux versus the winner of Cotto Canelo, obviously. Um, you can call it, and no matter who wins either fight, I want to see the winners of that fight. 
All right, and that's why I said it's kind of more than 20 because you could, you know, make a couple different fights there. So, um, but I'd like to see Triple G versus either Cotto or Canelo, and I'd like to see Lemieux versus either Cotto or Canelo. Um, Triple G versus Andre Ward. Get it over with. Just fight, right? I don't know if it can happen. Uh, maybe down the road, if Ward does decide to stay at 68, uh, if he does, let it happen next year. Get it happen in the end of next year, 2017 or whatever. Andre Ward versus James D. Gale. James DeGale has been calling this guy out every which fucking way. Let's have it. Let's see the fight. If Ward is pound for pound uh, fighter, then fight the guy in your division holding a world title, calling you every name in the book. And I think it would be a great fight. You know, Ward is more versatile, but he don't have big power. Um, I think, you know... Uh, DeGale could probably take damn near his best punch. I do think Ward might be able to knock him out, but it would have to be a perfect shot. Uh, you know, DeGale, he got a good chin, and Ward's power ain't all that. I would never saw, we've never seen Ward fight somebody like DeGale. We never saw DeGale fight anyone like Ward either. That's, that's the point, right? That's why the fight is so great. Um, I'd love to see if Ward could handle someone as versatile as DeGill, you know, who's uh, also a gold medalist Olympic boxer, has all that experience. He has his fundamentals intact. Um, great footwork, uh, great jab. You know, he got big power. Um, if, you know, if he feels like he's got you hurt, he goes for the kill. Um, he can fight from the outside. He can fight going backwards. He can fight going forwards. Um, great infighter. You know, he's a very good infighter. Um, DeGale's one of my favorites to watch. Right? Uh, I would like, to, and so is Ward when he's, you know, really fighting a top fighter. It's, you know, tr tremendous to see what he can do. I'd love to see those fights. I'd also love to see uh, DeGale versus Badu Jack. Because um, I, I know DeGale is blowing through. Bute. I just, I hope DeGale isn't looking over Bute, or else then he might pay. Uh, but if he's taking that fight very seriously, I expect him to win uh, fairly easily. Probably even KO, I'm telling you. But Jack, uh, Badu Jack, you know, he's on them memo shakes. Uh, he's been on them memo shakes for quite a while now. Um, so that would be... A tough guy to knock out, even though Porky, if our Corky fucking knocked him dead, uh, you know, but that's when he wasn't with Memo, right? Um, I'd like to see what would happen with, you know, that that kind of... DeGill's so much more versatile than uh, Badu Jack. Badu Jack's kind of one-dimensional. I think DeGill would basically outpoint him. Um... But, you know, with them memo shakes, Badu Jack is one strong son of a bitch. Like, Grove is lost in a fairly con fairly close fight. I can't remember who I had winning that fight. I just know it was very close. Whatever I said in my post-fight um, vid on that is who I thought won. I can't remember because uh, it was that close. Um, I might have actually had Groves winning that fight. I might have. I really might have. I'd have, I'd have to go back and look at the post-fight vid. Um, you know, Badu Jack now, Daddy's with Memo, he's strong. He's developed, you know. I loved when his trainer, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, was like, you know, in this camp, just somehow, <laughs> Badu Jack's power just, you know, tremendously increased. And they said that shit on national, like, on the t on TV. And, you know, said nothing of it. They said the whole, oh, well, you know, when you become champion, you get 25% better. Dude, no, you get, like, very confident. Your power doesn't become fucking better just because you want a title. I mean, that's what they tried to tell. Go back and listen to the fucking commentary. I, I, I wanted to throw my remote through my fucking TV. If it didn't cost so much, I probably would have. You know, it's it's ridiculous, man. But I'd like to see Jack 
and DeGale fight. I think DeGale wins. I don't think it's as good of a fight as some of the others, but it's a fight that we need to happen. Um, you know, come on, man. Then, shit, you know, Ward should be going to fight Abraham, snatching that title. Um, if he's not going to 75, that is. And, you know, then go after... Um, if he won't fight Ward, then have DeGill go after that title. And have DeGill go after Jack. Um, then unify. Have them fight and unify them belts. Um, Kovalev versus Adonis Stevenson. We've been waiting for this fight for what? Two years now? Two years? Is that how long it's been? <sighs> two years in a while. That's nuts, man. Um, <laughs> I, I can't say that, you know, I can't believe someone's ducking someone for two years because I saw someone duck someone for a lot longer than that. About three times that length, but still. Um, I don't know how Adonis, you know, lives with himself. I don't, man. Uh, but we need to see that fight. That would give us, uh, you know, an undisputed champion. Finally! Finally, we haven't had an undisputed champion since Jermaine Taylor, uh, you know, when he beat Bernard Hopkins. And I, I thought, actually, like, you know, Hopkins um, won that fight, but we haven't had an undisputed champion. And I think that was in, like, 2006. Um, so, basically, we haven't had an undisputed champion in boxing for 10 years. Are you kidding me? Um, Zab Judah was before that. Uh, and, you know, then there was a couple, there was like some, hey, it was happening before that, but, you know, that was the last time we seen him, man. Um, and Kovalev versus Ward. If Ward goes up, then that's the fight for him up there. I have the 68 fights and the 75 fights, but I want to see them all. Um, and Cruiserweight, I want to see Glowacki versus Draws. Um, you know, Huck, okay, but... You know, he, Glowacki just iced him in a tremendous fight. I wouldn't mind seeing a rematch to that, though, either. Uh, but I would like to see those guys have a fight because they're the two best cruiserweights, um, in my opinion. You know, Huck is there. He might still be one of the best, but he just lost to one. So now it's I think it should be draws to turn. Um, Vladimir, Vladimir versus Fury, and we're getting that one. Um, and Wilder versus Povetkin. That fight has to happen. Wilder needs to, you know, do whatever he does. But if he does have one more fight, whatever. Because, you know, Povetkin's fight and walk. Um, if he, but there's not even really a reason. If, if he wasn't getting a fight within the next, I don't know, just the beginning of next year, that fight needs to happen. Um, or I'm going to raise hell. And then the winners need to fight. The winners of Vlad and Fury and the winners of Wilder and Povetkin. They need to fight. What if, like, what if Fury won and uh, Povetkin won? That'd be a great fight. Or what if Klitschko and Wilder won? I mean, that'd be crazy, right? Um, Wilder would be officially legitimized. Um, and then we could see him go up against uh, the heavyweight champion for the unification uh, at the middle of next year. Come on, we can't get any better than that. Uh, we can have a lot of a lot of undisputed champions by next year. You know, 2016, we can have a lot of undisputed champions. They just need to start fucking fighting each other. Um, but let me know who uh, you think makes the most sense. Uh, from Floyd coming back to fight, um, or who you would most want to see him fight for a 50th fight, and then give me a list of, uh, you know, some of the, some of the fights that you just, you really want to see. You don't have to give me 20 of them or anything like that, just a couple if you want, or comment on, you know, anything I said. Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Peace.